Hi, uh, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Boots Herrera, the director of Ateneo Art Gallery and welcome to another Art Speak online session. We continue this series as we give special focus on contemporary art practices in the Philippines. Um, again, we want to remind you uh, that you can post questions and comments via the Q&A box uh, on Zoom and through the comments box on our FB Live page. Today's featured artist, Poklong Adading, is known for his conceptual approach in art making that range in various media, such as video, installation, photography, drawing, and painting. Born in 1975, Poklong graduated from the UP College of Fine Arts in 1999. He has participated in various important art biennials, such as the Guangzhou Biennale, in 2002 and 2012, the Jakarta Biennale in 2009, and recently as part of the Philippine Pavilion in the 2016 Architecture Biennale in Venice, Italy. Poklong has been awarded with the 12th Gawad CCP uh, for experimental video in 2000, in the year 2000, and was uh, given the 13th Artist Award in 2006. He is a two-time recipient of our very own Ateneo Art Awards in 2006 and 2008, and was granted studio residencies at the King's Cross Art Project in Sydney, Australia, and the Common Networks Foundation in Bandung, Sid in Indonesia. He also did residencies at the Center uh, Intermond La in La Rochelle, France. His works are included in the permanent collection of the Singapore Art Museum, the Mori Art Museum, and the Guggenheim Foundation. In an interview with, a with Asia Art Archive in 2008, he notes that he spends most of his time far from home and being on the streets, which is like being in another artist's studio, where he would ac accidentally find ideas and res uh, resources for his works. And I think 12 years later, this is even more true based on the works he will be sharing with us today. So I now hand the virtual stage to Poklong Anading from his home in Quezon City. Poklong? Hello. 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 Good afternoon. Hi. Thank you for the invitation. <clears throat> Thank you for, for agreeing to share your practice, no? especially to students from Ateneo high, Senior High School. Okay. Uh, Sige. Let's start now. Ako. Yeah. Uh, what I'll be presenting today are mostly documentation of my ongoing project that uh, somehow aligned to the Shared Residence Project. Shared Residence Project is the one that uh, is still ongoing, I think, uh, at Ateneo Art Gallery. Uh, I can say that through the Ateneo Arts Awards, which I was uh, granted twice in one of the results of the artists in residence, experiences outside of the country. It is a pleasure for me to return back the favor to whom, who I gave the opportunity to learn more and expand my knowledge beyond the local art practice. For the start, I'll be mentioning uh, some, artists, some artists' work who I find their art practice relevant to the flow of this presentation, but not necessarily direct influence of my work in general. I was told that this program is made for the high school, and I will try my best to simplify all my, my, uh, my explanation to my work. Uh, maybe I'll start with uh, work with uh, Lisa Brown. When, when, when I was in, uh, early in, in the university, one of my uh, teachers said to me, Roberto to 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 Peleo, to whom I recall sharing in our class, that the most important tool that we can rely on for making art is our own body. Um, I didn't realize it that I was actually doing it until I making this presentation. So I would start with you know, some, uh, some works, some artists who are dealing with, with, with their body, uh, exploring between drawing and, and, and the movement of the, 
in other gestures. Start. Started. Starting. To talk. While doing this dance. Is like. Opening a front loading washing machine while doing a load of typewriters. The first time I performed this dance. It was four and a half minutes long. This is another work of Tisha where she used her own body and then using a medium to, to draw a line on the floor on the canvas. This is also a work of Tricia walking on the wall, performed at the Whitney Museum, American Art, New York, 1971. And this one, a man walking down the side of the building. I'm also inspired with uh, Giuseppe Pinon, where he's lying down on the leaves and uh, leaves an imprint of, of his body. While he's lying down on the leaves, they are blown away by the air coming from his mouth, showing an imprint of his uh, breath. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, Richard Long. What he did is just uh, walk to the, through the grass until it creates a line. It's called uh, a line made by walking. And this is uh, Barry Leva. What he did is actually just a recording of, of, of himself running on the both sides of the wall without any video but, but just sound for the duration of 90 minutes. This one is a Rebecca Hoon. She used a contraption to her body to expand the idea of drawing. Other artists that I, uh, that who use this uh, kind of like body performance or use their body for their art practice, like Chris Burden, um, the good guy, Jackson Pollock, which I'm sure everyone uh, is like familiar of his work. And uh, I think one of the you know, memorable for me is uh, the work of Judy Sibayan, where he, she used her, uh, her body as a, as a museum, but instead of like, showing anything she just uh, recite all the all the collected uh, memories from what the artists have whispered to her and and without writing it down but just like uh, memorizing it and some of those collections are are also forgotten and, add, and but still, she still you know, keep collecting all these uh, performance. Uh, other work that I don't I don't have images. Uh, also, is like uh, Rene Akitanya who who used uh, who walks from Baguio to Manila with a push cart with a vegetable cart and then collect objects and until until he uh, reached Manila and and used these objects to his installation. That was from 1986.
And this one is a maintenance art uh, manifesto by uh, Mary Laderman O'Kills. What she did here is like uh, she uh, handshakes with the, no, with the garbage collector for, more, for less than a year. And this is her, her performance to thank the, the garbage collector that because of them, uh, New York City is alive. The next video I'm, I'm gonna show is a video from 1997-98. I made a various iteration of this. It starts from a drawing and it's called line drawing. Uh, I'm just gonna play it so you can watch the video. <laughs> So what I did here is just like uh, I draw a line while walking. So I use my own body to 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 make a mark, and using pencil as the evident mark from to the wall. I was inspired by the work of uh, Robert Morris called uh, Card File. In this work, he made a list of different categories of thought and action that are randomly systemized and series of index cards. In this work, he made, but, uh, but unlike in his project, I'm not writing any text. I want to approach the act of recording my thoughts and action by just simply drawing lines into, and capturing it on video. This repeats as it overlaps the previous lines that video captures the process. So from, from this idea, I explore the the categories, the different categories in art, connecting drawing, performance, video, painting, and other possibilities of creating. Walking for me becomes the act of writing as words are acts and acts become words. I've been interested also in different kinds of media, uh, more like process-oriented uh, works, processes that are based in ideas, as the pain of making a work. This is a work of Richard Serra. It's called Verb List. He said that drawing is a verb. And this is the card file of, of Richard uh, Robert Morris. From this idea of accumulation, drawing, writing markings, I explore the idea of this drawing on the wall and make it into an installation. What I did here is uh, I borrowed TV sets and VHS player from friends and installed it in a circular formation to create an illusion of travel from one house to another. So if you can see this, the, my hand is like um, passing through each a TV set that uh, I borrowed from different households. And uh, from that travel, I documented each equipment electronics from where it was taken. As so you can see like, uh, it, it varies in different sizes because during that time, this is the only equipment that I could uh, that I could uh, borrow from 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 my friends. This is the result of the drawing on the wall, the markings. Eventually, it became the subject of my paintings also. At the end of the video, the image resonates to the static of a blank TV channel. I 
I notice also how it resonates with the wiring that connects the source of electricity, which somehow in Malina it disrupted the sky. Hmm. This is my first public public workspace, if you may call. Uh, it's called Untitled Drawing on an Electrical Pole. So what I did here, I just I use paper and a dermatograph pencil to wrap it on the on the electrical pole and and make the markings around the electrical pole. It was this was from two thousand one. So for me, the drawing also become sculptural from from the shavings that fell on on the ground, which I collected also. This is a work of, this is actually a drawing of mine which inspired from Francis Alice. Uh, it's called Portfolio. This is like uh, an inspiration for me, like, like the, the use of basic, basic material and at the same time how we or us people how we navigate and also like how we negotiate with the with 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 our environment with the how we balance our ourselves in a certain situations like 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 performing this is not my image yeah i just uh, i just got it from from the internet and become fascinated with this image where well, with the invention of electricity I, our time have been drastically changed extending our time at night and expanding our home to places most of the basic necessities that we use today is run by it from home to work and social connection as we become highly technologically advanced society our experience in nature is replaced by images and data so I find this uh, our new uh, our new life is like a new reality, which is like right now we don't see each other but through screen or filter of of, of connections. I'm inspired with the I'm, I'm trying to 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 rethink that all these things that happen to us the reality is like going back to the idea of of allegory of the K by Plato's Republic in the Plato's Republic. It's, it, it's like uh, we are all like prisoners in a in a cave wherein our reality of, of life is like watching the image that's coming from the fire that someone's performing for us. I want to explore that idea how can I connect that 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 you know. Uh, negotiate that that intersection between our reality, our uh, and our also our artificial reality, wherein we rely on social network, uh, uh, different uh, movies, uh, Facebook, for example. So this somehow replace our reality, our contact to the natural uh, uh, environment. So what I did here, I tried to expand the idea of drawing instead of <clears throat> doing it inside a confi confined space. I made a wheel made of, made of wood and roll it on the street, going to the exhibition space where I'm going to exhibit it. So along the way, these are the images that I took that find me interesting. And eventually this become my source of inspiration from my, my uh, ongoing projects. So from these uh, photos, you will see uh, many contradictions and also 
realizations from how the inside and outside become interrelated and connected and how we use public space as a private and private space as a public uh, realm. And some homeless, we call them homeless, the street become their, their home. This is actually a car that is made for their home. That one below, you will see uh, a rag. One of the one of the ongoing projects that I've been doing also, that I'm pursuing. I've observed this uh, rags that are abandoned on the street. After the idea of cleaning something, it ended up to be a mess in itself. And this one is the, beside it, you'll see the makeshift scaffolding. It's called Andamio by the Carpenters. It's a, it's a recycled wood that never, that they recycle most of the time. It depends on what, how they want, and they, de depends on the, the use of, <clears throat> of constructing a space or, or building a, cons uh, house they use in their walls and fixing their walls houses building and then afterwards they collapse it after the after the the work is done so the camera like like what susan sontag means the camera makes everyone a tourist in other people's reality and eventually in one's own i become like a uh, tourists in my own in my own place or our place what i have observed during my walk is the, the struggle in the pollution and lack of infrastructure for walking and machines are more uh, prioritized than pedestrian the road becomes the workplace and home for men pedestrian they must be depend depended and respected from negligence drivers the city must be designed for pedestrian welfare and PWD and bikers. These are some notes that I've uh, chopped down from, read from Gideon Lasco, from his article, The uh, First Thought on Walking on the Entire Stretch of EDSA. He said that if people don't start walking, there will, there will no clamor for pedestrian reforms. This is the gallery wall where I exhibited the exhibition. So as you can see, the, 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 the drawing, these are the accumulated uh, drawing while I was walking. And from that walk, the stopovers, the photos that I collected, I, I installed it on the wall using the roller paintbrush. And this is the video that I shown you a while ago. The idea is to like uh, make uh, a loop of like the exploring the inside and outside of, of the particular space, for example, my studio and this public space and go into the gallery. It's somehow it's like a mobile strip wherein the inside is connected in, from outside or, or a snake chasing its tail like the Ouroboros. From that idea of walking, I develop more, I focus my, my attention to different things that I've seen around what's going on around us. Especially these objects, the abandoned objects that uh, you we could you could see around. This uh, is called the Untitled Landmark. It's a light box print. <clears throat> 
it's a light box print on from chromogenic print. Um, basan is the Tagalog word for for the rag. It's a cleaning material. And the root word basa is also the the can be means two meanings. Uh, basa can also be read as as read as reading and also wet. But in other colloquial terms, it is called trapo, a Spanish word for rugs, which has another layer of meaning in Philippine politics. It stands for tra, traditional politician. Uh, tra is the word for traditional and, and po is, means politician. It's like a combination of two words, traditional politician. What I'm interested with that play of word is that when I uh, try to research about about the under construction road, which is also another problem in Manila. There's an article said that uh, studies conducted by several organizations, such as World Bank have shown that road projects are among the largest sources of corruption, particularly in developing countries. Roads in these countries are designed to be substandard so that they have to be torn up and repaired as open as possible, as the expense of taxpayer, but to the benefit of public officials who receive kickbacks as, uh, per project. I think we, you are familiar of what's going on in Philippine politics somehow. Uh, this is my my personal experience uh, beside my studio. Like every once in every three years, uh, a new under construction road is being is going on beside my studio. So these are so what I did here. I documented that you know, that situation, and uh, what it what it affects my you know it affects my because of the sound of of, of this uh, construction. It affects my you know biological time clock because most of, during that time I I sleep in in the morning, and then and then at night I am working. So. When this happens, when 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 this happens, like every time it happens in beside my studio, I I totally cannot sleep or rest. But then I become a word. So as you, as you could see, I used the pattern from from the rugs that that was uh, made from from the the accidental patterns that that was that was made from. From recycling the rugs, so what I did is I painted the, over the the flat surface of the debris that I collected, and this is for my installation. This project is called Fallen Map. The next project, which actually uh, came from that, is a combination of of, of the two. Uh, this is called Bandilang Basahan. It's a video installation of recovered rugs that I found lying on the BC roads of Manila and made it into tents. The title is taken from 1947 lost film by Filipino director Eduardo Castro. So I'm thinking to uh, appropriate that title, still that title, but maybe somehow Bandilang Basahan film might be, can also be put into attention. This, uh, this is the, the other collection that I'm collect, the other photos that I'm collecting. It's called, yeah, the Andamio. Andamio is a Spanish word for gang of planks. It's a temporary structure or an ad hoc.
The damages are collapsed and recycled of most of the time abandoned on the site after construction is finished. To capture the essence of that, it's formed before it's totally destroyed or thrown away. What I did is I collaborate with a local tin smith sign maker. I asked them to swap, to wrap the scaffold with polished stainless steel to reconstruct its provisional form after its use. The process mirror box the image of the surrounding from its reflective surface of what constructs the urban space while the actual object remains hidden inside. I call this project homage to homage. This is another uh, collection, another project that I've been doing. It's called Gateway. It's, it's another series of work that was uh, conceived through walking. Using digital software, I inverted the same images of ar architecture and sky, the structure and space, using from narrow, from narrow alleyways and congested street, resulted from a considerate inconsiderate and negligent use of space in the name of progress and under overdevelopment. I juxtaposed the positive and negative space, which raises questions on the relationship between the city and the spaces beyond. Here, the city is not just a marker of human activity, but also an entity actively interacting with, even interrupting and encroaching on the ecology of the land seas and sky beyond the original borders. So from, from this collection, what I did is uh, I, I made a sculpture out, out of it and, and then installed it on, a, on, on the ceiling like, like a chandelier. This is how the video is presented. So you can see the, you know, the, the sky from, 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 from that form that I took, I juxtapose it. Uh, this, this sky is actually coming from, from different, you know, from different uh, flights that I had during my residencies. My, I, I'm always surprised when I, every time I go back to Manila uh, after each residency, because of this, I'm worried that soon Manila would be like, <clears throat> less light because of the you know, past uh, structure uh, because of the because of the development that's going on like 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 uh, building construction building condominium as if like there's no plan for it so what I did is like uh, I, uh, I I try to capture this moment before it, the, the, the space totally uh, closed down. The next project that I'm gonna present is the group show that we organize with Karina Ibangilista, Mimi Santos, and and some of the and uh, some artists from from the community. We called it Walang Kikilos. Walang Kikilos means uh, nobody moves, a Tagalog phrase for halt or command for an abrupt stop, as in hold up. The title was inspired from by artist writer Jose Bidouya, which is my classmate. Walang Kikilos, Nobody Mood, is a collaborative project that documents the rhythm and patterns, textures, muscular memories, and cultural aches that relentlessly trap in our beloved city, Manila, capturing the image, sounds, colors, surfaces, and substances of this club artist, our work of mix and multimedia installation of video and photography, incorporating music, text, and sound. 
the airport attempts to slice shards of the numbing, jarring reality by some 25 million of the city's day and night population. As the nation's Mecca, Manila is also the gateway to other Meccas, where the trade is exporting labor worldwide is broken. The impetus for the project was uh, Say Me From Manila, a song by Sleepyheads, a band whose members live all over Metro Manila. The DP is a dirge lamenting the nation that survives the archipelag archipelagic internal displacement both towards and within Manila, and then mutates to the larger and stands diaspora of generation of overseas Filipino workers. This is a text uh, from Karina Ibangilista. And this is the catalog that we made out from it. The cover is a uh, work by Roberto, Pel Ro Roberto Chabet. And there's also a essay contributed by Coco Ilumbao. And all, and all of the essays are translated also in Tagalog. Uh, some of the participating artists is Karina Ibanglista, Gary Ros Pastrana, Jerome Soriano, Idan Jensabaiton, JB Del Rosario, which is the host of our of our video from 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 that project, Walang Kikilos, Kaloyo Labides, Kawayan Digia, Lani Maestro, Louis Cordero, Dordibera, Mark Salvatus, MMU. Neo Maestro, Paolo Alcazarin, Paul Mondoc, P. Quentito, Romeo Lee, and Ronnie Lazaro. The, the, the layout of the book is made by uh, Miguel Lorenzo. So the idea started from when, 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 when I read this headline from the news, Metro Manila has the worst traffic on earth. What I also, what also frustrates me from the traffic is that uh, most of the people during the time, especially in the art scene, we, we rely more, more on social media than, than what, on, by looking at the work instead of like going to the actual exhibition. This is what happened when, when you cannot just easily uh, conveniently traverse from across Manila. So most, of the ex most of the events are happening in different, different parts of Manila. These are other headlines that uh, that that uh, discuss about different uh, news about about the traffic. Actually, it continues until uh, before the lockdown happened because of the pandemic. Based from my own experience, the average commute time would take me to my destination during the uh, the usual rush hours is at least two hours for 15 to 18 kilometers distance going across Manila. These are the daily scene from the people who commute every day for work, who spend at least four hours or even longer going to their office and back home. Commute is like uh, half of the working hours at work. We spend most of our time doing nothing in the traffic. And, and this is what led us to do, uh, we attempted to make a TV show out from it. We were thinking of how, what we can do during the traffic or how, or is there a way we can be productive while being stuck in the traffic? So what we did is uh, we invite uh, different personalities, artists, curators, uh, me, uh, people from the media, at least we have one, 
uh, architect and then during our trip well what we did is we, we immerse ourselves in the traffic while riding different uh, public transportation like jeepney buses pedicab and even kalesa i'll be reading a poem which was uh, part of the catalog chosen by Karina Ibangilista. It is a poem by Alfredo A. Yuson. City After Dark. Yuson appears random scene delivering this monologue in Ismael Bernal's 1980s Manila by Night. This is the, here is the poem. There's no city but this city, this landscape of your life. Wherever you turn, black ruins of your loves comes into view. You tell yourself there'll be another place, another time. You wish for another harbors, other voices, but only on an echo of the city, the self same city, steamers in the healing glass. There is no city, but not this city. So maybe the words of it, of it should be not degenerate, but regenerate. Ungenerate. It is a light town where the time is always hot. This is from Nick Joaquin, Manila Sin City. Once Nick Joaquin also said that when Manila sneezes, the Philippines catches us, catches a cold, which we can find its relevance during this pandemic. These are the, some of the videos still from, from the video that, that we made. And this is like a, a multi-screen contributed by the part of the collective, Neyo Maestro, Rico Antico, MMU, and Paul Mundo. And this is the exhibition space where we installed the whole uh, materials that we collected. So this is in the NCCA gallery. As you can see on the LED, this is the transcription of the conversation. What we did is we streamed them, all their opinions from, from that conversation. Installation traverse across the gallery spaces. And this is the, what we did here, we stitch the transcription in no particular order. And these are some artists' work who participated in the exhibition. This is a work by Junso Baiton, performed by Caloy Olobides. It's uh, re responding to the flow of traffic in Manila. The title of the title of this work is Ayaw mo paglihok, pero nilihok ang tanan. In English, you don't like to move, but everything is moving. This is work by MMU, Paulo Alcazarin, and Eden Cruz. This is a work by Mark Salbatus, where he follows the yellow lines along the under construction roads of Manila. This, this piece is a video. <clears throat> this is a collaboration with Mark and Jerome, where they animated the, the, the door, the, the portraits of the, the portraits of the, of the offspring of, of the jeepney driver. And this is a participatory work by uh, Karina Ibangudista. where he made a um, black lamb cake, an edible <clears throat> cake, 
which was consumed during the opening exhibition. The image is actually anthracotic lung tissue magnified 40 times. And after uh, eating the cake, consuming the cake, he made it into a banderitas. This is a work by Paul Mondo. It's a collection of emitted smoke from different car mufflers. Work by uh, Rico and Tico. Yanin makes his own body inspired from traffic light signal. This is work by Ney Maestro. He documented the footstep, his footstep from home to the gallery and embroidered his own path on the map. And this is a painting by Kawayan. And this one uh, is about also a participatory work. What we did is invite uh, gallery goers, visitors, <clears throat> to write their opinion about the traffic. As many from our guests doubt that the traffic in Manila, Manila has a solution, we reverse the idea of asking. Instead of answering what is the solution to the traffic, we ask how we make the traffic worse. Maybe by listing down those problems, maybe we can hopefully, again, we can change things for better. This is another project that I did, uh, collections of blister packs. From different objects and household. Most of them are came from holiday present, debt covers, and some are the stuff that I bought from, from, from stores. The production of blister pack collection mimics the mode of producing commodities, which deals with tracing the absence of things. So what I did in this project, I, I cast the blister pack with resin and made it into a mountain climbing wall. I was inspired with this idea of our never ending collection of objects. And also the debris of it. This is called uh, dash, 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 dash. Started from 2010. It's an ensemble of portraits gathered from numerous house visits to friends and random strangers, where I would ask them to put a plastic bag over their heads. I would then collect the plastic bags and replace them for a tote bag, which carries my portrait with my head covered with the same way. What interests me with these plastic bags are, these are the traces of, of, of the things that we, we acquire or the, the consumption and also, it's also the sign of how, what, what, kind of, what kind of environment we have in our own community. Although plastics also are being passed on and used in another form or function. So it's also irrelevant to say that these are what people are using at the same time because of the logos or, or names from, from that plastic. So for me, this plastic become like an abstract object, which has uh, can mean any uh, can mean something or value something. What depends on what's inside it and how we use it. And by putting it on the head, it's like uh, showing the you know, the how we depend on them and and how also blurs our identity from what we consume in every day. This is another project from at CCP. Um, the, the exhibition is called Normal, Normal Scheduling Will Resume, will resume Shortly. 
what I wanted to do in, in the exhibition is to make a collaborative project inspired from Manila Bay Sunset. Because Manila Bay Sunset attracts a lot of people and tourists to watch, to, to watch this event. But during this, during Typhoon, this is the scene in Manila Bay. It's like full of debris of, of plastic and other sort of things that accidentally or intentionally thrown on this, on, to the sea. My proposal for, the, for that show in collaboration with, with, with Neil Fetling and, and Vince Alessi. Uh, I want to make uh, a box that mimics the fish trap, the old fish trap, which we call, which is called bubu trap, but but in the size of like a Balikbayan box. So the idea for me is like to collect all those debris from 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 the bay. And then eventually pile it up <clears throat> from all those collected uh, collected uh, waste, garbage. My idea of, of of doing this is to like to show the the separation of 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 of, of people of us to, to to our nature. Like the more we consume using this <clears throat> packaging product is also the way we separating our our life from our environment. So eventually, the idea hypothetically would, as 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 I as I collect all this debris, the sunset will be covered by these boxes. Although from the actual exhibition. It didn't happen, but it turned to another way. Because during the time when, when I'm about to execute that, uh, that project, uh, the government started to put tents on the, uh, around Manila Bay, along Manila Bay, and which actually uh, are a good opportunity also for me to like use the same materials that they were using on that on that same fencing. So the people have has no, they, they block it to, uh, no, to, to, to lessen the pollution that is uh, being created from that, from, that, from that incident. So I'll, um, <clears throat> I'll read the, the concept for, the, for this project. It is called uh, Seawall. It's a collaborative project that deals with the memory and relationship of people towards natural environment of the city. Our imbalanced over-dependence on natural resources for our daily sustenance has led to eroding our relationship with nature, largely, largely for the sake of economic progress. Manila used to be protected from typhoons and flooding from mangroves. In fact, its name came from Mainilad, where Nilad is mangrove species. Sikiporia hydropilosera is the scientific name that grows beside the water, protecting coastlines from storms and erosion. Using this Balikbayan image of sending foreign goods to the Philippines, the stacks of boxes are metaphor of looking back and serve as a containment for the individual artists idea of the city we are living in, what, we are mem what are memories of this city, and what might we let go in order to make it more habitable for inhabitants. The artists who participated in this project is MMU, Catherine Sara Young, Paul Mondo, Rico Antico, Mia Maestro, Miguel Lorenzo Oy, Lorena Balinha, Johannes Weiner, Idan Cruz, Billy Adonis, 
Jelen Arab, Mio Aceremo, and Mio Tetley. And these are the, some of their works extended at the back of the wall. And this is the video of the sunset of Manila Bay. Filtering with the, with the screen of uh, fencing that they use for to fence Manila Bay. This is another project, uh, it's called Man K. So branches of mango tree plastic packaging, welded wire and mesh and, bis uh, and resin. Man K is a Tamil Dravidian word for man, which means mango tree and K for fruit, which you could think of like the fruit of man. And during the, <clears throat> and this is another work that I've been doing since the lockdown. These are studies for planters and lighting fixtures filled with plastic packaging products that would mostly be neglected after use. This result to polluting the environment and the waterway system. To lessen the waste and maximize its function, I use the plastic packaging as a study for greenhouse implement. And hopefully collect and hopefully a collection of growing life out of refuse materials. And the last pro the last project that I will be presenting is the shared residence project. Shared residence project interrogates the underlying processes, frameworks, and practices in exhibition making, specifically focus on the terms to share and to decide. In this exhibition, in the exhibition space, display a number of library cabinets that contain artworks of contributed by the same local artists, by some local artists. This is in Ateneo Art Gallery from, from their old, old gallery set up. And this is from Latro Visual Arts Center in Bendigo, Australia. So most of the artists, uh, most of the artwork are, all, are, are owned by, by local artists from Australia and some Filipino residents, artist residents in, in Australia, like Juni Salvador. So the idea of this project is that instead of, aside from borrowing a book, you can actually borrow an artwork. And this is the last, uh, the, the, the recent project of shared residence in art job. In, in this, uh, in this uh, project, because uh, what we did here is to to invite to invite uh, audience and guests to 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 borrow their the artworks of the artists that are displayed on the cabinet and 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 to have an exchange of of thoughts and conversation also uh, in this in this particular uh, project we we invited the guests to to exhibit or leave their valuable object that they possess during that time and tell about something of, of, of that object, why is it valuable to them. And, and, this is the, and this is the card that we are using for, for the record of, of borrowing the artworks. And this is the, the notes that they left and also exhibited in the exhibition space while they're taking home all some of the artworks that they borrowed. So it's some sort of like an exchange with the, within the artwork. And, and, and eventually they will send us picture of, of the artwork that they borrowed and how they displayed it on their, on their home or, 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 or hotel or or something. 
and from through that process uh, we love all the conversation and also things that are that are happening or not happening during that time through the help of the docent and their experience about the handling and maintaining the the process of borrowing and lending artworks and returning them to us. So I think that's the the last presentation of my last work from my presentation. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, thank you, Poklong. That's quite a it's a lot to digest. Um, given the nature of your practice, I'm wondering how you're coping with being locked down because obviously the, your interaction in the outside world is, is very criti crucial no, to your practice. So aside from, it's, a, it's good that you showed a few works that you're, you're um, doing, um, working with those discarded objects. Are there any uh, projects that you're thinking of um, brought about by this, our current condition now? <laughs> Actually, this is my break <laughs> ah, <okay. laughs> from, from all that. No, I think it's everyone's break. I think we all need a break. Mm -hmm. We all need a, this break to slow down and actually to rethink how we can continue our life and sustain it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, looking for the better normal. No? Yeah, saying. looking for the better no normal. Uh, or, or if there will be a, a normal, or are we going back to, to the normal state that we mm -hmm. used to have? So I, I think there's a lot of things to, uh, to, to think about what's happening right now. Because for me, it's like the idea when we were doing Walang Kikilos, this, this is what I was thinking. This yeah. is what's, what's, what's in my head, like uh, the the commuting the commuting every day, like like the traffic. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like uh, it's very exhausting. But then also this also uh, inspired me to do work or do something about those things. Um, right now, I think the the you know, the the challenging part for me is like how to organize this these objects that I've accumulated and, <laughs> and, how, and how can I maintain them. Uh, so, archiving is actually mm -hmm. a very hard part. And, and um, is that, um, are you just starting to archive your work? I, I know you have a lot of materials. I remember going to your studio a few months ago, I yeah, think. Yeah, I uh, think it's never ending. December. I think it was December when I, when I went there. Yeah, so, it, it's never ending because, like, uh, when I see something, I I I started to think of another thing to do. Like, so mm -hmm. it's somehow it's like a dis a, a distraction from from my focus from another then, project from another project. Uh -huh. So so I I also try to limit what I'm gonna pursue in a way to concentrate mm -hmm. of what should I be focusing on. So right now, uh, those the, the last part that I uh, the second to the last part that I've shown, the the study for planters and lighting fixture is the one that I'm trying to to develop. That hoping mm -hmm. that I could learn how to plant, <laughs> <laughs> and, because I, I don't know I don't have any idea about about it because most of the time I'm I'm out of. Oh, I, I think oh. that's the end thing now. Mga plantitos and plantitas, yeah. diba? mm, yes. uh, Speaking of walang kikilos, do you have a copy of the the book, uh, the catalog with you on hand? Yes. I just want yes. To uh, yes. Uh, yeah, if you can. Ah, so that's the cover. Okay. Th this is the cover. Mm -hmm. So this is the this is the result of our kakulitan sa street. I was not able to see the the NCCA show, but I remember seeing some, I think some works part of the, that series yeah. in um, uh, San Ngayon, sa drawing room. I think you had a few. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was works, like a uh, like that a, was after the NCCA show, no? We have like you know three iteration of of the project. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, drawing room CCP. We mm -hmm. use the no, we use the canteen. And then also ah, yes. the, the 
we set up a camera that would mm -hmm. also show the the what's happening in the canteen. We mm -hmm. we choose can the canteen because because it's the time where you can have a break and actually focus on it. So that's where we shown the 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 the, the, the video. And then actually while while all this thing is happening, this is also the preparation of my work to Venice Architecture Dinale. Mm -hmm. So this this become integral part of, of that project. Uh, uh, with the with the collaboration with with, with the fellow artists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was um while you were giving your presentation, I was listing down, noting down some um air disciplines, no, that, that your ideas would touch on um, concepts, issues. So there's sociology, politics, anthropology, even linguistics, urban planning, and ecology. So um, I, I would imagine um, it, it's a very organic process no, for you. Um, but what are the trigger points when you think of a project can, can you share with, with us? Um, uh, and, and I, <laughs> I think this is you know, a question that has always been asked to me I, from the recent uh, talk also from Lord Nabito mm -hmm. about the sociological, anthropological uh, aspect of the work is actually, I'm not so conscious about that because I think uh, mm. those are scientific studies that are compared to what I'm doing is not, is not enough. To, to, to give help or some sort of like <clears throat> giving equivalent to, to, the, to the work that they're doing. But I like the, the, the intersection of, of concerns because this, yeah, the idea of, of doing this is because I don't know anything about it. And, and to, to know something about on something that you don't know, you need to immerse yourself. Mm -hmm. So, so, it's so hard for me to you know, to express what I'm thinking, especially using this language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, part of that is the uh, problem with communicating with people. So what I did, I immersed myself talking with people, mm -hmm. people that I don't know, which I become more comfortable than people who I really know. Uh, so, and, and those who, those things are triggered also from all the patterns that I'm seeing from my daily, uh, daily everyday uh, activity, like cooking, uh, cleaning, very mm -hmm. simple stuff. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So I, from these very simple uh, errands or, or, or activities, I, I like to like understand more the complexity of, of that of that uh, everyday or the mundane things, mm -hmm. which actually connected to so many things uh, uh, from, from what we consume, from what, how we behave. And I, I know that I don't behave well. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, how, how we ap I approach things. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not as scientific as what you mm -hmm. think I am. <clears throat> and 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 I also have a problem with with writing down and, and you know documenting. So these are the things that I try to incorporate in the work to how to to you know, to navigate and negotiate with that problem. And yeah, but I to guess summarize, it, I don't I don't know anything. <laughs> you make up for it by exploring or using different mediums, no? Like a video. Um, photography, uh, so in a way you're able to bring them together, no, uh, visually, through through your works without necessarily you articulate it in in your through your own language. No? Um, let me read a few uh, comments. Um, this is a comment from Charlie uh, Verri. Um, you probably have met him. He teaches here in Ateneo. Uh, oh, loving, yeah, 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 yeah. loving how this uh... annotation. Yes. Um, he has published some, some books, yeah. poetry, I think. No? Uh, loving how his annotation on his artistic influences is also a living sen sentient artwork of sorts. No? Um, it's, um, I, I'm glad that you started with um, 
um, identifying or, or sharing how um, other artists' practices have led you to thinking, not necessarily continuing with what they're doing, but but um, influence, no, uh, specific projects, no, the, even the the idea of different ways or different approaches to drawing. I love that the the artist with so many with the head piece and drawing with her head. No? Um, so I, I'm sure that is something that. Um, students, uh, especially or young artists, uh, appreciate uh, because it, you don't really artists don't exist in a vacuum. You know, you're you're part of a bigger of a of a community, you no. Know? And and it's okay to look at other artists' works and then maybe um, explore your own ideas or develop your own ideas, which you have been been doing. You no. Know? Um, okay. Uh, um, a question from Lisa Ito uh, through Facebook. Hi, Lisa. Yes, hi Lisa. Thank you for joining us. Um, how has the lockdown affected your attitude toward the materials and the objects that you work with? Um, there are many things that came up to my head. First is that we, I don't need those. I don't need these objects. Mm. I realized that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, there are some things that we that that are, are more immediate, not not necessarily essential or compare what is essential or not, like what Coco Limbo said in this mm -hmm. article. But these are not uh, immediate things. But then, uh, like how the news and how what we can read in the news and how threatening and also we become so paranoid also with, with the situation of, of how, how we can protect ourselves with, with the virus or with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it's another kind of like <clears throat> um, using more and more plastic yeah. in, in the end, like mask, like the one-time use or, or the mm -hmm. plastic gloves or something. So for me, it's like a problematic you know, uh, uh, position, like a balancing act on the tightrope, like you artists produce work, but then at the same time, you, you also see how it also, some other works could affect my own environment as, as how I collect them or if, mm. if, if it's not well managed, this will affect my, my, our whole ecosystem. So there's a lot of things to think about. And 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 like like what I what I presented a while ago, like, like the idea of, of allegory of the kid, where we are all confined in looking at the shadow, which we find it the the reality, which is actually mm -hmm. what's happening: the social media, Facebook, Netflix, uh, academic institution, whatever. Uh, uh, it also realized me to like uh, yeah it's a contradicting thing that to protect yourself from this you need to stay home but then you need to interrupt and mm -hmm. then we mm -hmm. need to, to negotiate on that and honestly I, it's hard for me to you know to digest that but then I think I should start from here from what I have right now and then yeah this is actually a good opportunity to rethink all of those things because uh Miss Butch, if you're not gonna invite me here, I'm not gonna compile all this work and realize where it's going. <laughs> but uh, na lang we invited you. <laughs> uh, so at yeah, least it's a you. start. It's a start, not it, it, of, um, it's a start to realize to those things. And, yeah, and of, of course, asking this question, I won't. Mm -mm. Can never. Um, I can never realize this if if it's no one is asking. Um, in a way, you actually job. have answered um, the next question from Eileen Ramirez. But I, I would like to read her question. Medyo mahaba lang, ha? Uh, hi, Eileen. Thank you for joining us. Um, Thank you, Eileen. How do you deal with the apparent contradiction you're seeming to be critical or of mindless consumerism, but in the process of transforming waste residue into art that has gained currency? I guess you haven't really touched on this aspect. Uh, so um, what you have, uh, ano to? Um, 
the process of transforming waste and residue into art has gained currency into the art market. You still get enfolded into the object of production and consumption process. So how do you deal with the apparent contradiction, at uh, least of that yeah. aspect? Mm, yeah, first and foremost, those objects are not that sellable in our, in our, <laughs> or in our, in our, in, in the art world here in, a, in, in, in our context in the Philippines. Uh, I, I think it's also the way I want also to challenge the point of view mm. of collectors, how we look at things and what's the difference between painting and objects and uh, or other ordinary object. What is not art? What is art? So we, regarding the currency, I cannot really dictate that, what I really want from that. But this is the only way an artist or me personally to like divert the value of those you know, refused things. Those are like neglected, abandoned things. I'm hoping that, 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 that yeah, we will clean up a bit, organize mm -hmm. and manage it. Not thinking about uh, the, the, the value of it in the auction market or in the business, in the art business. Um, it's too much to think about. <laughs> but then I think what I'm into is like the idea of how I can lessen those uh, mm -hmm. or, or use that, the use the, those energy, those uh, unused energy and objects. So I'm not sure. <laughs> I think in a way you answered that. I wanted to ask if ever um, has any of your work been included in an, a recent auction? Yes. Uh, and I'm not aware of that. No one has <laughs> told me that, but, that but they're going to put you, it. But you heard, I know. Yeah. yeah anyway, I um, another question from Harry Vasquez via uh, our Facebook page. How do you keep track of your work? Do you also apply a numbering system? Oh, this is interesting. Um, this is interesting as you revisit, reinstall works and have a lot of active works that are still ongoing. Yeah, uh, yeah, numbering is actually mm -hmm. uh, is a big help. So I have lots of files that I need to organize. And then the, I don't want to change the titles of the, each project, but, but instead, since it's serial, I put number to it mm -hmm. uh, in order okay. to, uh, to, you know, to keep track of those things. Although some galleries, some collectors don't want to reveal their, their identity or their that they possess on those things. Mm -mm. Uh, it is quite difficult. And, and then uh, you only rely on those real, reliable, reliable uh, institution or galleries that you've been working mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. uh, collectors that who, who you trust that they won't even flip the, your, your work. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's, it's just because of the passion of collecting rather than, than uh, thinking about the value it, of what- As an investment. Yeah, as an investment of, of the work. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So yeah, the archiving is a big, I, I have a lot of those that I need to improve. And, and uh, to if, if we're, in, we're in, a, in a different condition, I would offer well, my maybe. students, no, not me, but yeah, my yeah, students, yeah, I mean, that would be, your, your uh, archive is actually a very good case study no? um, for, for, um, sure. for a collections management uh, class. Yes. Thank uh, you. This would be an, a very challenging. A challenge, yes. So, <laughs> yeah, but but should, uh, they should understand also. Sayang, maybe we can we can talk about that later, uh, offline. Okay. Um, 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 I'll be open to discuss that. Sige, sige. From Father Jason via FB page. Hi, Father. Thank you for sharing your creative practice. I've noticed that several of your art projects involve the participation of other artists and the wider audience. We were talking about this before we started. No? I'm wondering what are some of the learnings you can share with us in terms of the opportunities and challenges of participatory art, particularly in the Philippine context, or well, even in Indonesia. No? Um, I think um, you, the, the shared residence case study is quite interesting how um, how it it was um, uh, how how the community responded to it in Australia when we had it there at Bento yeah. and how ah. different the response was 
in um, uh, Indonesia and then also mm-hmm. here in, in Ateneo. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, participatory project you know, helps me to you know, expose, immerse myself outside because I am not really as active on social media. <laughs> but then because oh, of man. this idea of yeah, it's it's a cut and paste culture, and I don't know which one. It's so hard to identify which one is real or not, fake or thing. And and actually, someone made an account of my my name on Facebook, and 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 I and I started to to like give up of like using that social media. Although I use I use shared residence project, uh, I use IG for for mm-hmm. the residence project in in uh, Georgia, at Georgia, although it, it takes time for me to like adapt to it, but because of like, uh, it's time consuming. <laughs> it's so hard to handle for me. So, uh, yeah, yeah uh, the, the, I think those reasons, opportunities those reasons, and challenges. Yeah, opportun- yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's a challenging, that's the challenging part for me, the, the, the doing participatory panel. When I when I'm doing it, I'm not saying that I have perfected it or or I'm good at it, but because I am frustrated that some situations that are happening that that people should talk about or even just like be conscious about it, and and this is my way of like uh, connecting. Although I'm not saying it was widely talked about, I think those small gestures like. Uh, uh, doing project with your friends, with your mm, closest yeah. friends, would be the easiest part to like mm-hmm. have this, you know, healthy conversation. Not, not just like, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, those small conversation can expand and 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 create another or or trigger another inspiration and creativity mm-hmm. to other people. But I remember uh, the other day when we had the tech rehearsal, we were talking about a few of your um, Hello, the, sorry, sorry, but uh, not cut in, in I, question. Sorry. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yung, uh, rem- we were talking about the scaffolding, the series of scaffoldings that you were uh, collecting and you were saying that um, for some, the owners really, for them, it, it's, it's a valuable piece, uh, a valuable object because it's part of their daily uh, occupation. No? And um, trading it with something, uh, this is an example of, of yung participatory aspect of your practice. No? So um, what, was, what, what is it like? What was it like negotiating with non-artist? Um, ano to? Uh, participants. Um, I guess mm-hmm. it also leads you to other issues. No, it it, it expands um, the the problem, mm-hmm. as it were. No. Uh, yeah, my experience is actually the when when I started to look at those things that are abandoned, people Mm-mm. started to value them Mm-mm. because yeah. like well, before I before I get something from. From the road, or like for example, the andamio. Uh, uh, I've been passing through it like many times. If I really need it or not, or is this the object that I want? Is this the mm-hmm. is this the piece that I want? And then when I can stop thinking about it, I, mm-hmm. I I I start to confront them, and most of them would like uh, become like yeah, ask questions about it, and then they started to like feel they they feel like that the object is valuable. And then mm-hmm. they can see the possibilities of, 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 of other possibilities of using it. Uh, but most of the time they are abandoned, although they recycled it and changed mm-hmm. into a new form, uh, it changes. Uh, my, 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 the way I do it with them is like the way we talk. It, mm-hmm. it, there's no precise exchange or there's no equal exchange, mm-hmm. of course. Uh, what 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 I'm gonna do is listen to them and and see what they need. For example, mm. some so parang some people yeah barter. Some people needs money. Some mm. people just need them to 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 you know, lessen their burden and give it mm-hmm. to you. 
<laughs> so those are like the other treasures are like the, the other garbage is other treasures mm-hmm. so so this is some sort of like um uh, so hard to detect so hard to predict and and uh the more I want it, the more they don't want it to give to me. So, uh, uh-huh. yeah. so n- n- nagkakaroon sila ng, ano, ng, ng different perception. Which is, Siguro, which I like. Uh-uh. Yeah, because yeah, like um, you, you gave them a different, uh, a new way of looking at an object that, that yeah. needs to be um, parang useless for them no? or insignificant yeah. at least. For example, um, uh, I have experienced, uh, I just want to share, because when I go out, I, I feel like, I don't feel like I'm performing because I think I'm still shy person, <laughs> when, especially in the public, especially here. Uh, so one time I was like picking up, ano, I'm ready to pick up the rugs because I don't always do it. Uh, uh-huh. I, I only do it when I am ready to protect myself and to protect others from, from other things that I could get from it, a virus or, or bacteria or whatever. Mm. Uh, one time I was like walking and then like picking up routes using a, a stick to pick it up. And then uh, an, a, a driver, a jeepney driver, stopped me and threw a basahan in front of me. Okay. And then laughed. So I was like, I was thinking I should be, I should be I know, mad, angry, or, <laughs> or I should be happy of this. Because so, he gave you a material. He gave yeah, you he gave me some... a material. But then, but then also my, my intention is not to, ano, not to, not to show that I am performing or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so it won't be staged in a way that uh, mm-hmm. I only work with, with things that are there, that are mm-hmm. not, that are not intentionally there. So what I observe when, when I'm picking up rugs, uh, people would make a joke of me, like, like for example, uh, uh, kuya, galit ka sa or something there. <laughs> or, or brother, are you, you do you hate birth or something? So, mm. so those those uh, little comments are like some something to uh, no, something to digest because people have different perception of what we mm-hmm. are doing, and I think this is also a good way of like uh, giving that signal or or inspiration to people whether whether they like what you're doing or not. Mm. Okay, um, sige. there's a, a question from David Sibayan via FB page. Do you or have you created from materials which you may consider pandemic art? Parang, uh, well, in a way, you que- answered this with your the, the f- last few examples, no? Cre- uh, uh, with the materials? Mm. Oh, not yet, but I, my, but I think every artist is thinking about it. Mm-mm. Like uh, all of us, because like uh, this is the very direct to our to to what's happening right now. Yeah. Uh, but it's not easy to like. Sometimes it's easy to make something, but then sometimes if you have this burden of like protecting yourself and mm-hmm. thinking about your health, thinking of others' health. Uh, for example, the basahan, I won't do it right now because yeah. it will be risky <laughs> for everyone, for me. Uh, so uh, things that I, I I'm thinking of of like using mass, but but people other artists are also doing it. But mm. I think this will uh, this will be a, a pattern of, of what what will change us from our from our usual uh, you, life. Uh, uh, yeah, creative practice. Yeah, or it becomes part of, yeah. of your creative practice because I don't think it's coming going away anytime soon. Yes. Uh, Okay, a uh, question from, from Lorenzo Sanchez. Uh, how does one become more self-aware given that we are just living our lives through media and we don't really interact with the physical world, such as yes. mentioning the machines becoming more prioritized than pedestrians or wires that obstruct the sky? Mm. Uh, this is a big problem. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, so, because during the lockdown, our government don't allow us to to interact on the street or even mm. like uh, demonstrate our our our, uh, our opinion about what's happening, mm-hmm. and this also puts us in danger uh, to to lose that freedom to to yeah to limit those things that we should uh, we should uh, we should urge of like fighting for. Uh, 
it is hard uh, because right now we 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 rely on likes on likes mm. from Mm-mm. from from facebook from social media and also it can be fake yeah it can be publicated um uh, Uh, the only thing that I could think of right now is that how we start on our own body, on our own daily activity, what we consume, mm-hmm. uh, what we encounter, the natural environment, or there's no natural environment in our home anymore, but but the physical thing, like mm-hmm. the more we uh, know, advance our technology to computer, touch screen, everything, we lose also our sense of touch and and our mm. our, <clears throat> our uh, sensitivity to texture to objects that's why i think also become important right now for me that going back to the materials mm-hmm. and how we handle them and how we yeah. manage them for mm-hmm. the maybe in when when this thing change or or it, things goes back to normal we can have another perception of looking inside the museum of how we look up sculptures mm. or, or or artwork or, or textured painting rather than looking at on our, on on the screen mm. it it's actually very um fulfilling again to see go around to be able to go around a few galleries recently i've been doing that and see actual work instead of just on online um speaking sorry, of sorry, um, sorry. yeah Boots, can i add something because like Mm-mm. i think this is one also one of the intention of shared residence like <clears throat> um because of that uh, idea of like data are are only or or the value of things are are only Mm-mm. can be seen on screen i think uh, shared residence idea also is like to uh, not to go back to physical stuff and, and to imagine how how people should take care of those objects yeah. not just by looking by mm-hmm. by by bring it home you can mm-hmm. you can imagine mm-hmm. how it was framed how it was uh taken care of by by the museums by the gallery by the assistant from the mm-hmm. artist and how does it smell how does how how do you feel yeah the physicality of the, yeah, of physicality. the object no? yeah uh, i i i don't think i've shared with you last year around this time um My class was in collections management, and I actually required my students to bring home, uh, to borrow a work from that collection. Uh, they all did, and um, they they were mm. quite. Um, uh, they had mixed emotions, of course, because they know that there's value to the objects. We didn't mm. give them a new what what's the va- the the monetary value, no. Uh, the valuation of the work, but they know given the the names of the artists, including yourself, and then. Um, but I think it was uh, quite fulfilling in a way that because they were able to, they had experience to to care for something, uh, for for a work of art. Uh, it was a uh, um, an exercise actually in collections management. Mm. No, so yeah. I, I'll share with you later some That's images that they. Uh, no. Okay. Um, oh, Uh, this is a, a question from Migs Camacho, um, F- to FB page. Hi, Migs. What is the very first artwork that you exhibited? And how do you feel about it now, looking back, given your current practice? Hmm. No, I don't know. Because uh, if I would consider the young plates a school, <laughs> the, <laughs> those are gone. Uh, actually, when I see old works, I, uh, I have this tendency of like don't know when to stop but then i only stop doing a series of an idea or concept when i'm distracted from other projects or diverted to other things mm-hmm. uh, uh, i I'm, i'm inspired to uh, to see them and and also imagine how how would approach it now right now yeah even if it's like the same thing or something something would change uh i think this is the parang uh, natural thing that the things would change whatever you do. Like, like the same the same act of walking the same drawing on the wall uh would look always change would, yeah. would always look differently mm-mm, yeah. mm-mm. and i guess that would lead you to another project <laughs> in a way <laughs> that can lead you or not. Kaya nga, your your series are are 
endless. No? The many are still ongoing. Um, I want to go back to the CCP project. Um, you mentioned that um, you, your, your original plan did not uh, materialize because they started fencing fence, the, the, the Bay Hawk, Bay. No? Oh. And now I'm, I'm considering what's, what's on um, in the headlines now about yeah. sand being transported. That's part of the project, yeah. no? Yeah. Because um, uh -huh. they said this, this uh, rehabilitation started before the pandemic. Right. And I think mm. that that's the start of that's the um, that's related, no? Yung, yung yeah. Uh -huh. So Which is, uh, right. <laughs> I know. Um, I can't. Imagine I don't think it's a good thing. idea. <laughs> of course, considering especially considering the amount of money that they're spending mm. for that. Yeah. Um, okay. Any um, ang, um, Ang Zizek um, asks any advice to young artists, students. I think um, this is also related to one of the questions I, I had here in my notes. Um, Sigura, if you can uh, give one or two important things that young artists artists in the Philippines need to develop in order to define their own voice because you have done so I mean through the years so um, what would be your advice to young artists I don't know what to advise <laughs> uh, because if I give you an advice uh, you'll be confused uh, like what you <laughs> see on my my what I presented <laughs> you uh, it's like so many things, like this many trajectories. Uh, I think I was uh, influenced, or I don't know, maybe because of my teachers and also where I live or, mm -hmm. uh, or because of the environment. Uh, there's no such thing as, as uh, one line or, or a pattern, you know, so, so you could only discover it. And even now, I'm still trying to look at it and see what, what makes this work or what what is the pattern that i can see from from what i'm doing that i'm repeatedly doing mm -hmm. i think it's more like a practice not thinking about making work for me mm -hmm. but not but, the final but how, but yeah but not the final or or, or completed or, work or, or completed work or even like thinking about how you live how you want to live is actually the the real inspiration like when you know like how you want to live, maybe that would lead you to where you want to be. I don't know, maybe. Uh, uh, in my case, I am thinking of like how to lessen those things that I'm used to do and also the, the contextualize and consider what are the things that I can, that I should you know, adapt to, to what I'm doing right now. Um. Uh, no, 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 no precise, no precise uh, advice, but, but, mm -hmm. but, but you will find, you, you will find it on your own. And this is more important thing because like if you keep on catching up, following up things that people say that this is what you should do to be an artist or to be a better person, this would be a problem because you'll just be catching up of what they think. It's the mm -hmm. ideal life for them, mm -hmm. not for you. So maybe you should we should balance it. And uh, would consider you say what, it's, hmm. would you say it's it's more about the process of getting there? The the the, the then literally you did that, no? Yung yung nilakad mo, yung you walked the walk, um, rather than thinking of the final yeah. output. Uh, it, Actually, that's the main, you know, uh, I, I don't know what, where I'm going. I don't know mm, what to mm, do mm, with it. I don't even know how to discuss these things. Like, like uh, what's the meaning of this? I, mm, I wasn't mm. thinking of that. But then uh, for me to understand it is just to do it and do it, keep yeah. doing it. And, and, and observe what's, 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 what, what can you make out of it? Mm -mm. Like, like, what's your interest? For me, my interest was to, to, to go outside and to know what's happening outside. Mm -mm. Okay, thanks. Um, from David Sibayan, uh, from your perspective, what is trash and what is art? To you, are they context-based as when trash sometimes becomes art? 
and art sometimes becomes becomes trash depending on who's looking at it. Yeah, uh, it is uh, contradictory. The, the, <laughs> like what I said a while ago, uh, what we are doing as a man or a per person, people, uh, it always contradicts what what we you know what what we do from 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 our life and how we sustain them, and 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 for me the question is like uh, why, which one, which one we call art and which one is not? Which one is mm -hmm. not art? Uh, I maybe I am in the position that I am in the art world that everything I do, I would say considered as art, but then I also think that that uh, whatever we do or other people do is valuable and I would, could consider art for example the rugs are mm -hmm. not my work but made by someone else so I gave value to them by focusing on that that concern um, yeah it's a so context is an impo um, plays a big role no? yeah for example, you see, well, is actually I post this question to to the participants. It's like, mm -mm. what what is what is not important or, or what is important, what is not? Like, what mm -hmm. what are the things that you keep in your house that you don't actually use them anymore, but they're still there? Mm -mm. Is it the value, the history, or something? Um, but this can also, you know, threatens others' life. For example, uh, when you throw it or you neglect it mismanage it someone will consume it for example animals mm. their, their life will be threatened for example or, or the environment so parang lahat is actually valuable we, mm. we just need to rethink about <laughs> it um okay i want to um in in an interview you were asked um, when it comes to international. You said you, when it comes to international events, you were citing J the Jakarta Biennale. This I think was in two thousand. When was it two thousand eight? Yeah, the first one. Two thousand nine. Jakarta Biennale. Mm -mm. I am not so conscious about local identity, although at first I couldn't help but think about the issue of national representation. So. Um, and then you go on further. Now I just think about what work I can exhibit, what is most appropriate to show, and what interests me at the moment. So um, you, you call, you, notion of national identity, national representation, um, is that something that you, um, 10 years later, after this interview, is that something now that you think of, or it is, or do you, would you still have the same mindset? What is important at the moment? Um, what is relevant? Yeah, and uh, actually, I still have that idea, mm -hmm. uh, the identity. I think uh, <clears throat> the more we, we, you know, we identify ourselves or we define ourselves, the po the more it becomes complicated and complex mm -hmm. to other other entities. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, you know, it, it, uh, it puts walls, uh, me and, and the other, and, mm -hmm. and, and the only thing that would happen is like there would be a ideological you know, debate and war, mm -hmm. ideas of war, that the only thing would do is like you expand your identity, you're expanding your, your definition of what you are or what is nationality mm -hmm. and what is the scope of that. Uh, I think I think to have that kind of to resolve that, I think is like to respect that others other identities also, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, to negotiate on that part. Uh, in relation to what's going on, to to what's happening right now, I mean, mm -hmm. especially now, like uh, we we can always be diverted to different issues because of social media. Mm -hmm. And then, and then there are so many pressing uh, issues that we issues need to tackle. Needs, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but then you also have a personal problems that you need to you need to solve before you can go on mm -hmm. in order to tackle those things. So this is another way of balancing up mm -hmm. of, of how you will put yourself into in, in in order to go on. So I I think that's that's my opinion about that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, so thank you. Uh, I think that's all. Thank those you. are all the questions. Uh, thank you for sharing with us. Um, your very um, how do you call, um, your your practice is is um, it's interesting how you respond to to realities. No. Um, so conceptual art practice is very much grounded on reality. I think your practice um, shows shows that no, and um, we hope that uh, we we look forward to seeing more of your works. Uh, keep us posted, um, and so thank you, thank you, Poklong, for for thank joining you. us today thank for you. for sharing thank your your thank practice you. and more yeah. to to um, more to see. I hope in the future. Uh, do you have a forthcoming? Exhibition online or <laughs> oh no, uh, we have an ongoing at the uh, most space liminal, liminal ah, yes, space. Yes. Oh yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah, that one, that one I presented, and mm -mm. and also uh, upcoming um, next year now. But I, I, I don't think I I have. Hindi ko muna announce because there's uh, we're still negotiating about the the the, the date. Mm -mm. Uh, so that's liminal space spaces, no? At uh, oh. Mo Space, yeah. I think it's only the other one, until September twelfth on Saturday. 12th. Oh, it's ending I, on Saturday. I, I don't know if the no the Metropolitan Museum uh, queue from Life itself is still up. Ah, or, oh, oh. Or, just uh, or are, I'm not sure. Are they open already? They they they're, they're open was, to the public. Uh, yeah. It was, uh, I think. Uh, it was. I'm not sure. We, we should, we should, we should, I should read it. Maybe uh, for the attendees, if you're interested, you can check the website of Metropolitan yeah, the website. Museum. Oh. Mm -mm. Um, so thank you again, Pox, uh, for thank you. spending and your afternoon with us. Thank you. And thank um, you for those artists that uh, collaborated in, my, in yes. our project. So, and thank you, Ateneo Art Gallery. Maraming salamat. So, um, Yes, thank you uh, to the attendees on Thank you. Thank um, you for next. your questions. Yes, thank you for, for especially for uh, friends who visit, uh, who attended or viewed from Australia. Our, our friend uh, from Bendigo, um, Paul Northam was, was hey, Paul. Uh, listening. Hi, Paul. Um, Hello, Paul. So for our next featured artist, that's next week, we're having Kiri Dalena. Uh, so we look forward to uh, to that. Um, and then on October 7, we have Lena Kabangbang. And then October 21, uh, Datu Arellano. So we're doing this twice a month already. Um, we thought of at first doing it every week, but it's too, too difficult for us uh, to cope with the technical aspect. So I think twice a month would, would um, be uh, a good pace for, for us. So um, we look forward to all of you who attended today's session to join us again. Uh, please check our website and our Facebook page and our Instagram account. And with that, um, we thank you and have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Woods. Thank you.